Okay. Oh, yeah, and I turned the volume off. There, we got the volume back up. Hello. Welcome to class today. Uh, the deck of the USS Palmer Prize. What? No, that was stupid. Oh, I apologize God. for that. Uh, I, I offer my... Yeah, I, I offer my sincere apologies for that. Uh, it should never have happened. I won't let it happen again. Um, your assignments today, uh, you just have one. It's a multiple choice assignment. Um, technology and the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, it's the, the practice assessment. So this is, again, talking about how uh, we look out and explore the universe without actually going there. Uh, we look through the light. Uh, we analyze the light, and we try to figure out exactly what's going on. Um, so I'm going to go through some of the questions and try to figure out uh, exactly what they're looking at here, uh, what kind of questions they're going to ask you. The first thing to remember with the electromagnetic spectrum, uh, light travels as a wave. Um, so when we talk about wavelength um, and frequency, uh, let me come over here because i got room on this board. Um, it is literally traveling as a wave, almost like you would see in the ocean, waves in the ocean. So when we talk about wavelength, we're literally talking about how far away these waves are. Some of them are very, very small. Um, some of them on the other end of the spectrum are actually very big. So uh, if we come over here and come back to the assignment, uh, if you scroll down on this chart, this actually gives you the sizes of the wavelengths. So down here, you have 10 to the 5 meters. So that would be like... Uh, like a hundred thousand, ten thousand to a hundred thousand meters um, from from waypoint to waypoint. If you come up to gamma rays, it's ten to the negative fifteenth meter. So very very small. You're talking about less than a nanometer. Um, extremely small for your wavelength. So there's a big big difference um, in your wavelengths here. And then remember, the visible spectrum is only a very small part of that. Um, the other thing about wavelengths is your frequency. So literally, if you come over here and you're taking a look at your frequency, uh, let me look at this so I can make sure they can see. They can't see nothing. Uh, that's your wavelength. Your frequency would be how many of these waves come per second. Uh, so is it like five waves per second? Is it 15,000 waves per second? Um, it depends on the, the wavelength. Short wavelengths are gonna have a higher frequency. They're gonna come more often. Long wavelengths are going to have a, a low frequency. They're not going to come that often at all. So wavelength and frequency are, are related. And remember that your light travels as a wave. Uh, let's see what else they have here. Um, when they talk about, well, we're not going to get into the telescopes yet. That's the next page. Let me see what other kind of questions they ask. They talk about waves. Um, they ask you for one of the, the types of lights, uh, number of light cycle waves. So what could be a possible light cycle wave? You'll have to look at that chart. Um, given electromagnetic waves generally travel at the same average speed. Um, what is the relationship between wave frequency and wave length, um, and electromagnetic wave? Remember that that relationship is inverse. So if your frequency gets bigger, your, uh, wavelength gets smaller. If your wavelength gets bigger, your frequently get, frequency gets smaller. So they are opposite of each other, which is called inverse. So one's going to get bigger, the other's going to get smaller. Are you awake over there? Yeah. Oh. I don't believe you. Well, yeah, I know you weren't. Did you make that magic? Uh, huh? Did you make that magic too? No, this one I ordered off of Etsy. It has like really long yeah. strings really in the back. I don't know why, but uh, Gallagher and Cicel. Now I have this weird thing in the back there. Well, the shirts are were kind of expensive. Uh, if I didn't think that I was, wasn't going to wear this again, I wouldn't have bought them. But uh, it's like 30 bucks, which for me is kind of expensive for a shirt. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So they ask about brightness here. Pollux is 34 light years away. 17th brightest star in the sky. Um, and it's the absolute magnitude of 1.6 and the parent magnitude of 1.4. Uh, why are those similar? All right, so for that question, why are they similar for absolute magnitude and apparent magnitude? I don't know if they even talk about that in here. Uh, absolute, there it is. Um, so apparent magnitude is the brightness of a star as it appears from Earth. Absolute magnitude is the brightness of a star that it would appear at a distance of 10 parsecs or 32.6 light years. And the question they ask you 
The star is only 34 light years away. And so it's relatively the same. The two numbers are pretty much the same. And the reason is, is because of its distance. Um, if it were closer to us, it would be brighter. If it were further away, it would be, uh, it would be more dim. Um, but because it's really close to that distance for absolute magnitude, those numbers are very similar, which is kind of what they're asking you here. Um, ultraviolet light, most ultraviolet waves. All right, so uh, although enough ultraviolet radiation penetrates Earth's atmosphere to give you a sunburn, which we already talked about, ultraviolet light and sunburns and how it's bad for us, um, the ozone layer protects us from ultraviolet light radiation. Why is it a good idea for life on Earth? Uh, what is the disadvantage this causes for scientists? So the ozone protects us from a lot of ultraviolet radiation. Um, if you were out in space, you'd probably get a whole lot more. Um, why is this bad for scientists? Because when we look out into space, we want to be able to see that ultraviolet light radiation. Um, we want to be able to look into stars and see what kind of uh, UV light they're putting off. So uh, instead of sometimes only being able to look from the surface of the Earth, um, we send telescopes out into space to kind of get away from that atmosphere and keep it from blocking a lot of the things that we want to uh, see. Uh, we kind of got to get a clear view. Like if, you, if you're down in the forest, you can't see, you go up to the mountaintop, then you can see as far as you want to see. Uh, let's see. All right, visible light is kind of in the middle. You'll see that. I think we've covered a lot of stuff. Let me go ahead and go to the next page real quick. Um, and we want to look at reflecting telescopes versus refracting telescopes. So if we come over here. Just remember that uh, refracting telescopes, which they talk about here, refraction, um, refers to you having a lens. So you're going to have a, a clear, like, glass lens, almost like a magnifying glass. Um, that's what's inside of a normal telescope or like a pair of binoculars. Um, so it has that curved shape on both sides. Um, and it takes a large amount of light and focuses it down into a smaller amount of light, which you put directly into your eyes. Um, so you can kind of see more than your normal eyes would be able to see. That would, that's what makes all the pictures bigger so you can see all the detail. Um, it's, it's not necessarily like a far away thing. It makes it, it, makes it bigger. Um, so it appears to be closer. Uh, does that kind of make sense? Um, but it's not really closer. You're just seeing it bigger in your field of view because it takes a bigger amount. So the bigger you make these, um, the better you'll be able to see. Now, the problem with these is at a certain point, you know, uh, I mean, it depends on how professional you're talking. It is very difficult to make a nice lens that that's super big. Um, if you want to make it small, we can do that pretty easily. We can make machines. Um, after you get over like a couple feet big, um, there's little waves in it, there's imperfections, and it's very difficult to make such a large lens um, that's clear and can actually reflect the light down uh, to a very specific point there. Uh, and so there is kind of a limit to refracting telescopes. Um, and they say that. However, lenses cannot be made too large. They will sag in the middle and produce distorted images. Where with reflecting telescopes, you use a mirror. And we're pretty good at making mirrors. Um, and what we found is your mirror doesn't even have to be all one piece you can have a bunch of different pieces of a mirror and essentially get the same effect so all the big space telescopes they have lots of different sections of the mirror wake up hey wake up wake up take your hand away from your head and keep your head up uh they have a lot of different sections of mirrors that they put together and they even fold it up before it gets out into space and then once they get to space they unfold it and it kind of reflects everything right to the point where they need it to be uh, so that's the difference between reflection and refraction. I think they ask a question about that. Yeah. And then uh, they do ask a couple uh, questions about the spectrums and the, the chart there. So if you go back to the first page, this chart, not that chart, but this chart right here will probably help you answer quite a few questions. It looks like they do several questions off of this chart. Um, so when you get to the assignment, make sure you open up the reading. The reading is still assigned. If you come here, there's your reading, there's your assignment. Um, you can go ahead and get started on it. If any of you at home have a question or need some help, please send me an email. Uh, maybe go dress up like a Star Trek character or uh, put your Whataburger uniform on or whatever, whatever you want to do today. 
you know, you dress up with your squad, even if it's just a squad of one. Uh, you know, you got your back. You got your, you got your own back. It's cool. Uh, or dress up like Star Trek or Whataburger and know that there are people at school that are part of your squad too. Uh, so y'all have a nice day. Email me if you have any questions, and I'll see y'all tomorrow.